Hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan, and we welcome to the studio Benson Boo. Hey, everybody. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Wow. <laughs> it's good to see you. It's good to see you. I, I think I might hold this the whole time because when I hold it like this, I can I can hear through the headphones, but if I let go of it, nothing. <laughs> but so so I'm gonna hold it too, just like Pete did. I wish we could fix it. You know what? But some things are unfixable. That, you know what? Mm. You are right. And I had that conversation with somebody the other day, somebody important in my life, and they were like, Some things are beyond repair. And they, like you just, there's just no solution. There's no, there's no way to fix it. There, there really isn't. And oh, I just did. So actually, your some things wrong. are yeah. fixable. Some things are, but sometimes the fix is to admit that something is unfixable. That's true. Um, that's that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what point I'm really trying to make, but I just you know let, let that marinate. Okay, we <laughs> marinate. We have an entire EP to discuss. We do. We have, like, I feel like every time I see you, which I've seen you a, a couple times over the last year, in between seeing you, you live extraordinary amounts of life. You know, I'll probably die when I'm, like, 50. Well, because of that, I think life is so short, you just gotta, you just gotta go for what you want sometimes. And a lot of people don't do that. And it's, like, it's really sad to know that there are people that could be living their best life, but instead they're so focused on what other people think about them that it's holding themselves back. And I like, yeah, obviously I have my insecurities and I'm a big people pleaser. So like, it's hard for me to do that sometimes, but like, go do what you want. You know, I try and do that. Whether that's jumping off an 80 foot cliff or jumping out of a plane with a parachute or going on stage in front of, a couple thousand people and performing my new EP. You just got to do it. But when did you realize that like performing in front of people and making music is exactly what you wanted to do? Because your story always baffles me. Whenever I get the opportunity to share it with somebody, I do just cause it is wild. And in a nutshell, like you only started singing because of a high school competition. Your friend forced you to do it. Yeah. You really didn't know you could do it. Yeah. It is weird sometimes even for me to think about that, that that's how I started. And it was only like two years ago. Yeah, yeah, like three. But sorry, sorry. No, 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 same thing. It really is. Um, but I'm not a big numbers guy, so, you know, who knows? Yeah, I have but a perception of time, whatever. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm still, like, developing in, in, in what I want and, and how I want things to go. Um, but music is, is such an interesting career. Um, the music industry is crazy. It's very... Just like one hundred percent to zero percent in an hour, you know, like like there's never one day that's the same as the previous. It's it's just like everything's always new. Do you want it to be that way, or do you crave routine? I oh my gosh, I'm the worst routine person ever. But yeah, uh, you can stick to things like going to the gym for two hours a day, right? I hear you stick to it. <laughs> no, no, I, I've been working out for two weeks now, and well, maybe. Two and a half weeks, um, but I've you know I've, I I like I miss a couple of days here and there, and that's only two and a half weeks. So like, can I really say that I've stuck to it? No, not yet. No, not hey, yet. Call me another eight. Yeah, but then it's like you also got to eat healthy too, and Sour Patch Kids just always look appetizing, <laughs> and that's not something I can fix. It's one of those unfixable things. Yeah, yeah. I just like. <laughs> I'm just here, and I like Sour Patch Kids, and that is what it is. So I will indulge in it. I mean, if it makes you feel full and whole. Yeah. I struggle with it. But I've been doing better, actually, the past two and a half weeks. Sorry, you're about to say something. I know it. Well, I, I mean, every day is different, and making music every day is different. But there is, like, a lot of sacrifices that come with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like less life is being lived socially and with friends. Yeah. The the thing about it is like, I'm obviously not like a huge pop star. I am very much on the rise and I want to get there. So like, there's not a lot of people that are like, oh my gosh, I know Benson Boone. I love Benson Boone. There's not a lot of them yet. Even yeah, they know oh. your records. But like, people see the best parts of what I do. 
people see when I'm on stage, when I post a, on Instagram about performing, and they see like the best moments of the show, and they see that I'm on tour living my best life, and they see that I'm on vacation here, and it's like, that's what social media does, is like it shows people the best part. But nobody knows how much work goes into that, how much planning, how much, you know, marketing, how much time in the studio, how many interviews, how much promo, how much traveling, how many plane rides are going into every single video, every post, every song, every EP. It's like, it is a lot of work. I don't sleep a whole lot. I'm traveling constantly. Like, it is, it's a lot sometimes, but it's totally worth it in the end, like, to have a record that I'm proud of and to get people to hear that. Like, that's the payoff. That and touring. You know, that like, that's that's what it comes to. And that's when I get it all back. I'm on stage and I see people and hear people singing back my lyrics and I feel the energy from the crowd and I see people being moved in the audience and then crying in front of me when I sing a, a song about my dead grandma. And it's like, wow, that's so cool to me. Like, that's my favorite part. It makes it all worth it. It does. But this is something that like you never really expected. No. Four or five years ago, this was not even. But I, I think, I think that's made it even better though, because like, there's a lot of people in the music industry that have been working for, like, like working towards this their whole life, huh? like since they were three, they've been sitting down on a guitar or a piano and singing songs. And they started writing when they were like seven, and like, when I was seven, dude. I was on the roof of my house with, like, 30 balloons ready to jump off, expecting <laughs> that they were just going to take me down slowly. Like, I was an idiot. That hasn't changed. But, like, it's just, that wasn't me. Like, I like when I was a kid, I was just, like, going outside every day and, like, doing random things. Crazy shit. But now that I'm doing this, like, I've been doing this for, like, two years now, and I love it. It's so new to me, and it's so cool, and I have grown to be so passionate about the music that I'm making and it's still so fun to me because everything is like blowing my mind like I didn't think I was going to be on stage my first concert was in Europe in front of 15,000 people and that was like what uh. like I went on stage gosh I had to change my pants like six times I was just like <laughs> peeing myself left and right it was so crazy to like do a concert when like Go, go back in time three years like I didn't even know I could sing and so it's just so crazy to me still and I, and I think it, it makes my energy very like, like innocent and innocent totally. isn't the right word but like no it is like you're totally like not I'm a, jaded I'm a baby <laughs> in, in the music industry I, I, I put on my adult diaper every morning do you feel this need to appreciate it deeper because you you acknowledge the fact that people have sacrificed for their whole life yeah to not even get zero zero point one percent of what you've been able to get in the last two years i mean is there a part of you that remembers that or that maybe that fuels a deeper appreciation or uh, guilt is not the right word whatsoever but i i guess i never really think about that because i feel like if i thought about that more i would i would get like my head would get too big and, and it's not like i'm like doing anything dramatically better than anyone else Every, everybody has a different journey in this industry I'm, I'm just doing it differently than anyone else would. And same for the next person. They're going to do it, like, different than anyone else would in their case. But, like, some people's trajectories are faster. Some are slower. Some are bigger. Some are smaller. And, like, I'm just trying to do the best I can. That's all I know how to do. Like, I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but I'm trying my best. And wherever it takes me, it takes me. And I obviously want to get to a certain point where, like, I can go around the world and, like, everyone will know who I am. But there's a lot of work that goes into that, and I'm just trying to get there at my own pace. You control the effort, not the outcome? Yeah. Always? Always. But what is, like... By the way, we were going to talk about Pulse, which Pulse. is the EP. 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 The EP. We're going to talk about Pulse, which is the EP. You can listen to the whole thing on Amazon Music. What does EP stand for? Uh, extended Play. <laughs> right? Yeah. What? Wow. Oh, fuck? Not, no, it's just funny that he has an EP out. He's like, I don't know what the hell this means. I mean, most people don't. And then an LP is considered an album, right? Which is like a, What is an LP? I have never even heard of an LP. I don't know. Can you I, I don't want A wanna, long a long That's for stands for long play. Look you, at you. Long. I got the long part right. 
I know it's crazy because yeah. like that that word isn't usually even in my vocabulary. Long? That's yeah. yeah it's too big. Yeah, no, it's too long. I'm more of an SP guy. Wait, wait, wait. Short. <laughs> ah, I just got it. It's okay. Damn. It's okay. Like to be honest, but be honest, I think like you know, uh, yeah, more manageable. You know. Yeah. For yeah, everybody yeah. involved. Yeah. The the SP. Yeah, yeah. Small penis. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's oh, not shit. even what just I was me? trying to say. No fucking way. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I see myself you just out. gotta, you just gotta own it and move on. What does pulse mean? Well, well, we're on the topic. Yeah. <laughs> no pulse. Um, <laughs> pulse. So I, I think th- this is like getting very artsy and like, I, I don't know, just like, like very metaphorical. But a pulse is like the most. Like, like the smallest sign of life. When you feel a pulse, you know something is alive. And to me, like this EP is the first of a lot of new music this year and a lot of new music to come in, in coming years. But like these are the types of songs that I'll be releasing. Like, like, like this EP, no song is similar to the next. They're all very different. And so this is like the beginning of, you know, a new era of my music and so it's like the smallest part the beginning of life of my continued you know bodies of work if that makes sense 100 percent. so i mean okay <clears throat> listening to this ep we're gonna get an understanding of everything to come mm-hmm. where does it start this project and then like what's the first song you make for it and what's the last song in in, in pulse yeah um, the first song was, I think, uh, I think the little, little runaway was the first song. Is that about somebody? Uh, it's about my older sister. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We've talked about this before and you performed it, um, at, I think we, at the Amazon, the Amazon uh, music. music breakthrough concert mm-hmm. city sessions. Yeah. 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 Um, so that was, that was the first song I wrote and <clears throat> little runaway is like, it is the the more ballad track of of Pulse, and it's about um, my oldest sister Kaylee. I have four sisters, and she she's the oldest of all of us. Um, but she struggles a lot with her mental health, and um, the meaning behind Little Runaway is that like we don't always know how to help people. You know, a lot of people go through their own battles and and struggles that like you can't even begin to understand. Because you're not them. And I, like, like obviously I want to help Kaylee. And I want to, you know, do what I can to support her. But sometimes it's hard for me to know what to do. And so all I can really do is be there for her. And that's what Little Runaway is about, is, like, letting her know that I'm there. And if she needs me, I will be here for whatever she needs. Um, And that's kind of the sentiment behind the song. Like, it's like, won't you come and we can stare at the stars and look at the comets from the roof of my car. It's like, just come... Take some time with me. I, I'll, I'll be here for you. Um, little Runaway, I know it's been hard. You're trying your best, but you keep falling apart. It's just like, like very personal to our relationship, Kaylee and I. Um, but like everybody takes their own meaning out of it, you know? But that's just like what I wrote it about. That's art. But I, and I do think like there's an important conversation there, which is just being there for a family member or a friend as they're going through something, whether that's something mental health related or physically physical health related. Yeah. Being there for them is really all you got to do. Yeah. Be there to listen and just show up and, and give energy. You know, you don't need to know what the right thing to say is all the time. Yeah. Really just being present does so much. It it really does. It really does. And that's kind of what I tried to get across in that song. So, but, but at yeah. the end of the day, like, you know, baggage, of we all carry our own baggage, right? Yeah. Some people check it. Some people have carry ons. <laughs> um, I usually just bring a backpack. No, but it is really scary <laughs> to carry somebody, uh, at least help somebody carry their own baggage. Right. And, and figure it out yeah. and, and be there. And a lot of people run away. Um, but the reality is like just being there goes the furthest. Yeah. Coffee cake. Coffee cake. It's a good I one. I love coffee cake. And that's probably like, Oh, Coffee cake is so good. Um, when I wrote that song, 
uh, I wrote it with two guys I, I work with quite often, Jack LaFrance, who is the writer, and Jason Sweeto, who's the producer. And with Coffee Cake, like I had, I had a meeting with Amazon Music, uh, like when the session started. So I was gonna be two hours late, and I called them. I was like, "Yo, boys, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna be late to the session. So just make a beat. Like, don't even focus on melodies, lyrics, like any direction. Just like make a beat, and I'll come and like." throw down to it and they were like sick we'll do that do your meeting see you in two um did my meeting ate some food wonderful sushi mm. got to the session and like they had the beat the production of coffee cake and it sounded so good it sounded so cool i was like guys this is amazing uh let me listen to it once and then let's get out our voice memos and let's let's do this listen to it once and in one try the next take i got out my voice memo and sung all of the melodies for coffee cake that you hear now. So do you just like mumble over it or what? Yeah, do you do? it's like like I just sing random words to fill like melodical space. Um so it's it like like in the voice memo, if you listen back, it's like me none of it makes any sense. But it like has all the melodies. And so it was like we wrote the song like two hours after that. It was like so quick because it felt so good and it came so easily. Um it was amazing. So, uh, at what point do you realize what it's about? Uh, while I'm writing it. Like, like I, I don't, like, start writing lyrics if I don't have direction. So, like, I'll write the melodies, and once I hear how the melodies are going to sound, that's when I know the direction of where I want the meaning to go. And and that this is, this is, like, a rare song where, like, I don't ever write songs that way. Like, like this was very different from any other song on the EP. So, after I listened to the melodies back... I kind of got an idea and a vision in my head of like, like where I wanted the song to go, and then we start writing lyrics. So a song like Sugar Sweet, how is that different? Um, that one, like, I I started on the piano. I started playing Sugar Sweet on the piano, and then we're like, I, I kind of want, want to go for like a, like a Motown, like a little more sassy vibe on this song after I was like doing melodies on the piano. And then we're like, okay, well, let's work on production for a bit and, like, get it to a place where I can sing over and see if it sounds good. So then Jason Evigan, the guy who produced it, who is a legendary producer, um, you know, did, like, the boom, 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 like, that part of the song. And then I just kind of sat there and, like, tried the vocals or tried the melodies that I did on the piano, and it was, like, a perfect... It was just the icing on the cake, man. Actually, I don't like saying that because I don't like frosting on cakes. It's so gross. You know, me either. It's, it's... I love cake. Like, I, I, I feel like the integrity of a good sponge cake is compromised with too much icing. But, like, there is this frosting that's so good where it's like the kind of whipped cream frosting. It kind of just tastes like whipped cream. Yeah, it's light, though. Yeah, it's, I don't it's like very light. cream cheese frosting. Me neither, me neither, me neither. And, and I had this Amazon music party where they had this huge cake, and they actually, like, I'm going to be honest, the cake was the coolest cake I've ever seen. It had, like, my face on it and, like, the sugar sweet thing, and it had, like, a microphone on the top, and it was, like, so cool. And I was like, there's no way that that cake tastes good. But it tasted good. Was it like the fondant? It, fondant? Fondant? I don't know if that's I think you're thinking it. of fondue. No, no, fondant. It's like the fondant? thing, the cake it's, rug. Yeah. It looks like a rug for your cake. The, this is a, this is a new word for me, so I don't even know what you're talking about. Pull up was, a picture. It was so good. I, I, was, I was thoroughly impressed with the taste of the cake, because I'm not a big cake guy. That's, I mean, I'm glad it was your cake, so... Yeah, it was my cake. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks. You 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 were able to have your cake, and you ate it too. And I ate it too. Yeah, I did eat it. Back to sugar sweet. But it, yeah, back to sugar. It's sweet. one of my fucking favorite songs of all time. Really? I listen to it all the time, dude. It's so good. I gotta play you some unreleased songs too. So, h how many songs did you make for this EP to whittle it down to oh. like so few? Uh, fourteen, I think. Wow, how'd 14? you like hard to pick? Yeah. It was really hard to pick because I'm going to be honest, this sounds super cocky, but you know what? It is what it is. Like all the songs, in my opinion, were extremely good. I was very proud of all of the, all 14 of those songs and like narrowing when, whew, narrowing them down to five was really hard, but like they're going to come out at some point. So it's, it's like, it's not like I'm, it's like not life or death.
So, so but, why why an EP? Why not just put out an album with all the songs on it? Well, that's coming. Okay. That that will be coming. But uh, I th- I think an album has got to be done right. I I, I don't want to just drop an album, especially for my first one. I want it to be a special moment. And so, like, when I have a song that has a lot of momentum, that's that's <laughs> that's when I I do the album. What is the origin of what was? What was, dude? What was actually was done similarly to Coffee Cake, where like that was another. But I wasn't I wasn't late to the session this time. I was like, I got there, and I was like, it, it was after we wrote Coffee Cake, and I was like, I kind of want to try like what what we did last time. We're like, let's make a beat, and then let's do because I don't ever do that. I always do like I find chords on the piano that I like, and then I write the melodies, and then I write the lyrics, and that's how it goes. But this time I was like, hey, let's make a let's make a cool beat again. And then like let's just try singing over it. So we made like the chorus drop for what was. And I was like, you know what? I don't really wanna go this direction. So then fiddling around the guitar, we did like the guitar part um at at the beginning of the verses. And I thought they were gonna be two separate songs, but I'm like, why don't we just combine this? And like make it one, and so <clears throat> we put the guitar with the production of the chorus together, and then again, like two tries on a voice memo, and I just sung the melodies for uh, the chorus and the verses, and it was just like it came together pretty quick. Hey, who are you talking to? You? No, wait, no, no. In the song. <laughs> oh, that's I was like, what kind of, um, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're amazing. Um. In the song, I'm talking to myself actually, which which is a weird take. Like I've I've never done it that way. Um, I guess I talk to myself a lot though, so it would make sense. But like, I like in the verse, it starts out young, standing on the edge of 21, staring at the man that I become sometimes when I lose my control. Like, that's me. That's that's me. I'm about to be 21. Um, it's like like talking to myself, and it's like he's dumb. If you blink, he'll blow up like a gun. Jumping to conclusions just for fun sometimes. This makes me sound like I'm a crazy guy. I'm I'm, I'm not, mostly, but like, it's just reflecting on myself when like when I lose it sometimes. You know, like sometimes I get really competitive, or sometimes I get, like get really like um. You know, just I kind of bash myself for things that I don't need to be so hard on myself for. And that's what it's talking about. It's like, I'm an idiot sometimes. Everybody is. And I wanted to write about that. And then the chorus is more like shifting from talking about myself to now talking about a relationship I had with someone that I wish I could redo. There's always regrets in life. Like, you always have something you wish you didn't do or, like, you wish you didn't say. Like, like when you have an argument with someone and then, like, a day later you're like, oh, I could have totally just obliterated them if I said this. It's like something like that, but it's like a relationship. Not that you would want to obliterate them, but, like, um, it's more like I wish I could redo this connection I had with someone. And that's what the chorus is about, is, like, you know, I, I had this relationship with someone and it was like, right person wrong time and I just wish I could have like I wish I could change my name I wish I could start again like like I wish I could be a different person and go back into this person's life and just restart and try again do you actually wish that no I like my name Benson Boone it's a good name but like do I wish I could re- redo it with a person it's probably what you're asking because that would make sense um, <laughs> yeah sometimes I do like I like some like like, is there truth to right person wrong time when the reality is like the right person makes it the right time? Yeah, that's see, see, people people say that. I think there is so much truth. I didn't ever believe this until I, I honestly wrote this song. I think right person wrong time is actually so true in certain cases. But why can't you come back to it? Because maybe a lot of it's attached to age. It's attached to where you're at in life. Whatever. If it's really right, like, is it? If it's right today, will it not be right in five years? Life changes pretty quick. And in some cases, I'm sure right person, wrong time, like people break up and they don't want to, but then in a couple of years they get back together and it works great. Like maybe that's the case in the scenario. I don't know. But like the fact that I don't know makes it unknown. 
I mean, that's like the most idiot thing I've ever said because that was I get so it. obvious. But like, but at least you at that time, I, like it, it, it was not right because I had to put my career before her, and and nobody deserves that. Huh? Nobody deserves to be treated like a second option. That's why I wrote Sugar Sweet because it, like you don't want to be treated like something else is before you. She deserves the world, and she deserves someone to give her the world. And I was not being able to do that at that time, and so I I I ended it, and like, that's where you know the inspiration for it comes. But like, sure, maybe in maybe in the future, like, it could work, and we could rekindle what we had. But I don't know, and you never will know until it happens. And then like, that's why, right person, wrong time is so hard to understand, is because like. Nothing is ever totally right or totally wrong. Like, like we don't know, I don't know, anything in, like, in comparison to what this world is full of. Like, I don't know, crap. And especially when it comes to a person, like, you're just living your life and things happen and you adjust. That's what life is, just adjustments. But, like, you don't know those adjustments until they're in front of your face. And so that's why... I, like it's right for some people and it's wrong for some people. Right person, wrong time. Only, well, like it's not something you can say. No, that's never true. Or no, that's always true. It's like for some people, totally. that's the case. For some people, you know, it could have been the right time, but you just made it the wrong time. Sure. I feel like I just said a whole lot of. No, but I, I followed you. <laughs> um, but if if you remain <laughs> mentally open to it, you know, then maybe your paths will cross again. Yeah. It's meant to be, I, I do believe more than anything. I, you know, I don't necessarily know how I feel about wrong, uh, right person, wrong time, whatever. But what I do believe is that if the universe really wants it to work, it will work. Yeah. You know? I feel that. Man, the universe. It's pretty crazy. It's brought you pretty far. Yeah. Sorry. I, uh, yeah. Oh, it's sick. You yeah, should it think sick. about it. You should try to, I mean, how often do you try to stay present? Present? Like, well, Present and then reflect. Um, I'm pretty bad at reflecting. Because yeah, you're always moving. Yeah. That's true. But like, man, I I would rather like move a lot and, and do a lot of things and experience a lot of life and then reflect on that than like do one thing, reflect, do one thing, reflect. When's the last time you reflected? Uh, Look back on anything? Probably when I was like... Five. I <laughs> I told my mom she looked fat because she was pregnant, um, and I didn't really understand pregnancy that well. So I was like, "Gee, mom, you look fat." And like, I always I looked back on that like right after I said it, and I was like, "Why did I just say Wait, that?" That's the last time you reflected on something. Like she was a seven months pregnant with my sister, and I'm sitting here calling her fat for being pregnant. Like like she's been <laughs> she's been holding. This is ridiculous. So what much. Are you, what are you talking about? No, keep going. It's keep good. Keep going. Keep going. She's keep been going. holding it like, like she has a kid in her stomach. Like sometimes I can barely handle Taco Bell in my stomach. And, and she's sitting here with, with a whole human being. And, and, and I just called her fat. And I'm her son. What a dick. I still reflect on that moment. Other than that, though. Yeah, I probably should reflect more, but but I don't. I think I could a lot more. That's something I could work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could call me. You could call me like once a month and see if I've been reflecting and hold me accountable for that. I would like for you to do that because I think it allows you to really soak in the life you've been living, and maybe have like yeah. a new. Actually, I do remember I was on stage a couple months ago. Um, I was performing in Salt Lake. Um, and the Salt Lake crowds are crazy, dude. Yeah, they love you in Utah. They do, and I don't know why, but, like, I'm not going to be mad about it. That's no. great. Um, but I was on stage, and, like, I, like, took it in for the first time. Like, I was on stage, and I, like, literally stopped and just looked at the crowd, and they were cheering, and, like, it was an unbelievable for me in, in, in a very, like, like a growing moment for me to where I realized what I've accomplished and like, like being able to be on stage. Like, yeah, I'm not like 
a global superstar, but like that was a that was a venue that I sold out, and I was very proud of that. And like I just started crying on stage. It was like very emotional for me to like just finally be able to be so present in the moment that I was like overwhelmed by this crowd. It was it was incredible. Well, hold on to that, you know. Think yeah. back when shit gets hard. Yeah. I will hold on to that. You got to reflect, you know, you live a lot of life. Yeah. Yeah. You got to realize what you're doing in order to give it real meaning. Yeah. I feel that. And purpose. By the way, listen to Pulse. There's a link in the description below. If you're listening on YouTube or wherever you're tuned into this podcast, you can listen to it all on Amazon Music. Dan, what are you thinking? You know, I think you do make global superstar music. You're just not there yet. Dude, and you're Thank huge you. in like, France, brother. <laughs> I, I, that... I've I've been to France five times in the past three months. Good, so that you do all these trips now, so then you never have to go back. I but but many, I want to go back in the future, though. Yeah, yeah. I have many superstar friends who like went to Japan like three times in like two months, and yeah, you know, it's just a part of the gig. Like Ariana Grande. Yeah, she did that. Yeah. Not that I know her personally, I, I know you do. But oh, like, did I tell you that story? You did. Yeah, that's oh, something for I, a long time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you were traveling like crazy. You were going back somewhere that you had been. You'd gone to this one place like three times in a month. It was Paris. I Jesus, went to Paris yeah. three weekends in a row. To do what? To do promo and interviews and a show. Uh-huh. It was like, I, I, cause they have, there's this, uh, there's this really big TV show there. It's like, it's like the biggest TV show in France and it's called Taratata. Yeah, it's like, ta da ta But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> um, and the host is so cool. He is so cool. Um, yeah, his name is Nigu. Do you have um, an interpreter in your ear? Because he's speaking to you in French, right? Yeah, yeah, he's speaking to me right now. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says hi. Uh, um, hi, hi Nigu. Bonjour. Yeah. He said, he says, oui, oui, croissant. That's what he said. He said to uh, relay that information. But no, it was like, he's like the coolest guy and a host of a show. Like, it's very. They they're busy guys. I mean, they got a lot of people to to meet and to greet and to please. And he like genuinely was moved by "In the Stars," which is one one of my songs, and like cried with me. That's that's, that's the first time. Like during an interview, we talked about it, and I he just asked me to sing an acapella right there. It wasn't planned. He just like, "Can you like sing it right now?" And I sung an acapella on the show, and like. I, I was closing my eyes the whole time. I was really feeling it, and I opened my eyes, and he's sitting there bawling, and the crowd was crying, and it just like made oh. me cry. And it was like the most beautiful moment ever. And so that was the first weekend. Then I came back the next weekend and did like uh, like more promo, and then came back the next weekend for tour and like did a show. And so I love France. Crazy, they love you, man. We oui, we oui. the city of love. The city of love. There's like an in the stars French version and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This girl Philippine um, was was is like the artist I collaborated with. She's so cool. Didn't you say recently that you like can't believe you actually wrote that song or something? Oh yeah, like like sometimes, sometimes I like I'll listen to my songs and it's like I, I actually really like to listen to my music. I don't know if that's unhealthy or not, but um, I, I was li- so. I was listening to In the Stars and I was like, I wrote that. Like I wrote that. And, like, the fact that I wrote it just surprised me because sometimes I can be so unintelligent that it, like, <laughs> worries me isn't the right phrase, but, like, it is disturbing. And, I, and, I, and like, those lyrics to me are very moving. Like, it, it's, a, it's a very beautiful song, and it just kind of surprised me that I, like, could write that, you know? Yeah, do but... You, oh, go ahead. Do you remember how it came to you? Like, like exactly <laughs> where you were at? Like, did... Because, you know, people sit on the couch and they give a bunch of different f- explanations as to how their big songs came to them. And the, the truth, the, everybody's different. The truth of the matter is I was in the studio with two guys um, and both of them absolute legends, just like so good at what they do. And they were asking me, they're like, hey, what do you want to write about today? And... um. I just, I remember they asked, they were like, hey, like, like, what's something where you, where you can pull out a lot of emotion out of something? What's an experience you've had where there is so much emotion that you have not touched yet? And I was like, my great grandma, she passed away uh, a couple years ago. And like, 
I, I still have just never talked about it and never like really thought about it. And I was really, really close with her and losing her was hard. Um, cause especially the last couple of years of her life, like she lived right next to us. And so it was like, I saw her all the time. Um, and so I, I told them that I told them that story and they were like, well, that's beautiful. Let's write about that. And I got on the piano and started playing and like <clears throat> sung the melody um, and the words, not all of the words, but like the I'm still holding on um, to everything that's dead and gone. Like I started singing that on the piano and they were like, that's it. That's what we're going to go with. And that's where it started. That song has changed your life. It really has. It really has. And it's like re-blowing up right now. Oh, it will forever. It's time. I listen to it all. It's it's timeless. It is a timeless song. I say I like very rarely will tell somebody that like a song is timeless because it's the like you got to live up to that shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. And there's like a sure. t- bunch of like larger indicators that would show something like that. That song is timeless. Thank you very much. That is a, that's a big compliment. And and God's truth is like you will have other ones, I'm sure. But even if you don't have a single other timeless record, one is that's like. That's a feat in and of itself that goes on to change people's lives in so many different ways. Yeah. Because the size and magnitude of something like that is, it's felt forever, you know? And they're mostly captured to the most emotional periods and, you know? Yeah. And and yeah. by the way, like, I think that goes, like, on both sides of the equation. Like, the Macarena and the YMCA, they are timeless. <laughs> but if they think, are. But they're also attached to the deepest of emotions, right? The emotions aren't sadness and death and deep reflection no it's like you're at, a, you're at a party and you just learn this new dance totally different and there's a girl next to you yeah. and you're trying to impress her so what are you gonna do but emotion you do the macarena obviously yeah yeah whenever you want to like get somebody like oh, emphasis on that really little hip swing at the end yeah, yeah. if you like really give your body a roll with it classic you know classic oh it's such a good song no but it is two sides of timeless you know yeah and emotion yeah. connects it all so it, it really is fucking timeless thank you thank you well, the reason I said the uh, superstar music is because I was listening to Coffee Kick and I was like, if this was a Harry Styles song, this song would be massive. You know, you I, I've thought about that before. I and, did. And I, I genuinely think, like, genuinely to anybody that is watching this, if you could listen to two of my songs to get both sides, like with the upbeat and the sad, listen to In the Stars and then listen to Coffee Cake. Coffee Cake is like one of, if not the best song song I've <laughs> ever written like it truly coffee cake like means something right yeah 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 what is it okay well in the song the song is about um it's about going into this coffee shop which first of all I don't even, I don't like coffee I've tried it and it like if you were to cut down a tree and get a big tub of water and put this tree in a tub of water and then maybe put like, like a couple sh- shovel fulls of dirt in it and then, and then completely close it off and leave it there to marinate That's for eh, like a year, then take it out and scoop up a sip of that water and taste it. That's what coffee tastes like to me. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> maybe, I, I'm not a fan either. I agree. Yeah. It's just like kind of, it, yeah. Anyway. When's your um, birthday? June 25th. Interesting. Yeah. Keep going. Why? Are you like one of those aquarium guys? Yeah, I'm an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I frequent the aquarium. <laughs> I am deeply connected with the larger aquarium. Isn't that what it is, though? It's like you, it's like um, you either have cancer, a scorpion, or aquarium. No, no. Or tortoise. <laughs> Anyway, Coffee Cake. Um, if that's not a clip on TikTok, then I don't know what the fuck is. <laughs> Honestly. Coffee Cake, like, it, it's about going into this coffee shop where, like, it's a coffee shop in the song where, like, people go to meet people. And you see this girl, and she is so intriguing to you. So intriguing that, like, like you want to talk to her so bad, but you don't know what to say. And right when you gain the confidence to, to you know, like, do anything about it, you kind of know you're never going to. But, like, right when you feel you've gained the confidence, like, she walks out, and it's like... Do you even know how much you meant to me just by being there and let like like letting me observe you for 15 seconds like just a glimpse. And that sounded really creepy. But <laughs> move on. Um 
so there was one time, like, obviously this isn't like the deepest meeting in the world, but like I saw this girl um, and I saw her from across the street. It was actually while I was here in LA and, and I saw this girl um, and it was like so... For some reason, something about her captured my attention so deeply. And I, I like, I fall in love really quick. And, and like, actual true love, obviously, like, that, uh, like, I've, I've only really, you know, like, felt that once. True love is, like, really built over time. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's that. completely like, different. But, like, you gotta get to know someone. Fall in love. Like, I fall in love really quick. Like, as in, I gain interest that quick. Uh-huh. It's like, if I see you, and I'm a, like, and I am like attracted to you. Like, by the time you say hi, I have already pictured what our kids will look like, and like that's just how it is. That's only slightly disturbing. I know it's a problem. It's definitely a, something built solely off of physicality, correct? No, no, but it's, but it's like, well, I guess that makes me feel like a complete dick now. It's okay. We won't unpack that. Okay. Um, but like. No, but it it really I guess it is like totally just based off what someone looks like off of right. a first glance of what I just talked about. But in in this case it's like something about her was so intriguing to me like the way she carried herself. Um and I and then she just walked away and I was like wow. Did you ever attempt to like go after her no. or reconnect? It's I just didn't. gone gone like the I didn't. Wind. And obviously that's not the craziest story in the world, but it was enough to like pull emotion from just the experience of like the yearning to like meet someone and want to get to know someone just based off like a a first impression. So is this girl the coffee cake? That's the coffee cake girl. Got it. Yeah. You could have done like one of those misconnections. It's where you like post. Like when a call drops? (laughs) Can you hear me now? (laughs) No, when if you like... There's these forums on the internet, and if you see somebody that, like, you found attractive or you had a brief moment with them, you would post on, like, you'd send in your story to a forum, they'd post it and be like, saw this girl at this coffee shop at this time, she looked like this, this, this. You know, I was looking across the street and wanted to get to know you, but you got away before I could. That might actually sound even more creepy to me. I mean, the whole, yeah, yeah, the whole thing is a little creepy. (laughs) Yeah. I, I will be honest. A couple things went through my head after that girl walked away. That was not one of them to go post about her. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe in another life though. I'm just workshopping ideas here, man. No, I know. It, it, it's now this girl has a song about her, and she'll never know. She won't. And that's the way it was meant to be. And that's the way it was meant to be. That's why coffee cake is what it is. Listen to Pulse. Link in the description below. All of Benson's music is on Amazon Music. What else are you thinking? I know you've told the story, but that kind of reminds me of the story about how the girl got in the music video. Oh, yeah. You just walk up to her at the airport. You're like, hey. Yeah. You Dude, so for the Sugar Sweet video, first of all, like, the video was supposed to be in Fiji. It, we, we filmed it in Hawaii, but I, we had a boys trip prepared for Fiji. And then I was like, I told my label, I was like, hey, I want to have this trip. And I don't have very much time off, so, like, please let me just have this trip and be able to relax with my boys. And they were like sick. I'm like, cool, we're going to Fiji. And three days before the trip, um, there was a typhoon going through Fiji, like like just a crazy storm. And I personally wanted to go and like, you know, just try and surf the storm waves and see what happens. But my boys were like, we're not going. And I was like, come on. I don't ever get time off, and I finally got time off. And then the label hit me, and they're like, hey, we have to film a music video. Sorry, you can't do your trip. So, like, everything was falling apart, and I was like, dude, everybody put an ice pack in your pants and chill out because (laughs) we're going to figure this out. We're going to do it right. And so I was like, let's just go to Hawaii, and you, Warner, bring the filmers to Hawaii. Yeah, bring them filmers. bring, Bring the filmers because I am going on my trip. And they were like, okay, let's do it. So we get like a, a small film crew, which by the way, this, this director, Matt Easton, so cool. Such a good guy. I love him to death. He did the Ghost Town video. So cool. Um, and the Room for Two video. Anyway, we get Matt and his crew to come to Hawaii. It's so like the first like three days of the trip. We're just going to be um, filming a music video. And the day before, I realized we needed a girl for the video and so I was like, well, we messed that one up. Um, 
what should we do? I was like calling my friends. I was like, hey, can you be in a music video? No one could because obviously like a day before isn't very much notice. So I was just going to plan on like going to Hawaii and like going out to the beach and finding a girl and like seeing if she wanted to be in the video. And that was my plan. So we go. I'm, I was in L.A. flying out of L.A. All my boys were flying out of Washington. And so we were just going to like meet at the airport, you know, in Hawaii. And I got to the LAX airport. First of all, gosh, I hate the LAX airport. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. It's ugly. But I got there, and I was at my gate, and it was like about to finish boarding. I was walking up, and I look across the terminal, and there's this girl. Same thing, just very much caught my attention. And I was like, what are the odds? What are the odds this girl is in my music video? So I walked up to her, and I was like, hey, my name is Benson. I'm just a like singer-songwriter. I'm filming a music video in Hawaii. What are you doing the next three days? It was a very bold entrance, but like I didn't know what else to say. My flight was boarding in two minutes. And where was she going to? She was going to Maui. Oh. She lives there. And so I found out she's like, oh my gosh, hi, I'm Mia. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm about to fly to Maui. What, what island are you filming on? I was like, Oahu. And that's like a 45-minute flight. And so she was like, well, I can fly out tonight. Like, after I get there, I can, like, if you get me a flight, I can come to Oahu and film. And I was like, sick. And it literally worked out so perfectly. She was so cool and so cute and so, like, like she got along with my boys super well. It was, we all had such a blast. Perfect. It was, it was See? perfect. So, like. Being a little creepy works, man. What, was that creepy of me? No, I mean, just, you know, you're look, you're looking for, you're just looking, you're perusing, you're, you're, you're aware of your surroundings. Yeah. I was just being aware. That's it. I was tapping into the spidey senses. And it worked. Did she have any idea who you were? Because you could have been just some nobody. Yeah. Well, she definitely did. Uh, no, she didn't know who I was, but she knew my songs. Okay. Um, so she, like, like, I, like I showed her, well, we looked up my Instagram just so she <laughs> you know I wasn't like some <laughs> creepazoid. Hey, um, check out my Instagram. But yeah, so it, it worked out really cool and she was really cool. Damn. That's crazy. Things just happen to work out for you. You know, I think I have. I'm gonna knock on wood here. That's a lucky log. I think. I think I. Ha I think I have some good luck in my life for sure. But yeah, I think it's karma, also man. because, like, I just. I don't worry too much. I. I kind of just. I try to just live. And like, when things don't work out, I'm fine with it. But when things do, obviously, it's great. Character is fate. Remember, character that. is fate. Speaking but of. Luck, you are you do like extreme sports. Have you ever like gotten a serious injury or have you been pretty lucky with all that? I've been pretty lucky with that. I, I've been I have been like I did my first backflip when I was like four years old. Um because my dad used to do them when I was a kid and like I idolized my dad and I was like, I gotta try this. And so by the way, he's fifty, he can still backflip. Yeah, like are you nervous for the day that you try to do it and you fit fall? It won't happen. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's um I'm just now I have been doing them for so long that I'm so comfortable backflipping. It's like, it, 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 it like I, I don't ever worry about falling because it, well, it's just like, it's it's like doing a trick on a skateboard. Like if you've done mm -hmm. it a million times, like you're not gonna sit there and like be nervous about trying a trick. You're just gonna do it. I don't know, dude. I can't ride a skateboard. I've only ridden them on my ass. Okay, it's like riding a skateboard on your ass. Like the more you ride it, you're not gonna be scared about riding a skateboard on your ass. Yeah. You're just gonna ride a skateboard on until your you ass. fall. Yeah. Yeah, that's my first time publicly saying ass, by the way. Really? Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, ass. <laughs> sorry, Mom. I'm so sorry if my mom watches this. Pretty cool. Brendan Urie did backflips all the time on stage. Do you, remember, do you, do you ever see him do that? I've, I've seen a video, yeah. Yeah, he's a backflipper. Dude, I, yeah, me too. Uh, I think you already <laughs> knew that, though. <laughs> yeah, that's why I brought that part up. Respect yeah. for the backflips. But also, um, I like, I'm also not a guy who's like, Oh, I can backflip. Oh, I can backflip. I just like to do them, and like if you ask me to do one, I'll do one, like anywhere. So, like, do you want me to ask you or like? No, 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 no. That's that wasn't me saying you should ask me. I'm just saying like, like I I'm just always willing to do a backflip, and I will do them anywhere that it looks like is a good spot to do a backflip. And I'm not just like trying to flaunt that I can backflip. It's just something I enjoy doing. But know? remember, he can do a backflip. Guys, I can do a backflip, okay? Have you ever got to the edge of a cliff when you're cliff jumping? You're like, no, that's that's a little that's a little too far for me. Usually if I'm on a cliff that's like a little too high, I'll just do a double so it makes more sense. A double backflip? 
Or I think my my so flipper, his answer is not to not do it. His answer is to just retool how he jumps off. No, the no, no, no. <laughs> it it like genuinely does make more sense sometimes to do a double than a single because like you have so much time in the air. If you do a single, you have to do it so slow that it's almost not cool. But like my trick of choice, like if I was on a, a cliff that was like sixty or seventy feet, like that's high, and I'm not just gonna do one flip because I'd probably over rotate. So like. You do the the flip of choice. I don't really know what it's called, but you do a front flip into a front flip 180. So it's like a front flip into an aerial. And it's really easy to spot because you do the front flip and you come out of the front flip and you can, again, make eye contact with the water and then you can just float out your next flip and then land it. And it's great. And it looks cool, but it's like really Jesus. a lot easier than it seems. Yeah, but you must hurt yourself figuring this out, no? Not really, no. Damn. I've definitely had a couple, a couple, like a couple slaps in the water for sure. Like, yeah. if if you tr- if you send flips a lot, that's just part of it. Yeah, it's part but, of the flip flip life. But bro. I've never had one that's like bad enough to like not flip again. Yeah, yeah. Man, I can't even dive off a diving board, brother. You definitely can. I I know you can. The moment yeah. I walked in here, I looked at you and I was like, "That guy can dive off a diving board." <laughs> it makes you feel any better. I can barely tread water, so. Uh, that's so cute. That really is sad. I I look like a guy you could barely tread water. <laughs> he looks like a diver. I look like I would sink to the bottom. No, you don't. You really don't. I do. Listen to Benson Boone's music. <laughs> Pulse is the EP. It's fucking amazing. You really are one of my favorite people and one of my favorite artists, so I thank you for giving us time always. We went to the Taco Bell headquarters together. It was very, it was bonding us. We did, and let me tell you, I, I will continue to work my ass off Whoa. to get that purple card. I'm I'm going to get it someday. Uh, you're talking about the iconic Taco Bell purple card, which allows very few people to get whatever Taco yeah. Bell they desire. Yeah, and and I understand that I'm going to have to put in a lot of work for that. Yeah, and you need your ten thousand hours. And I am so willing. I don't want to brag. I have one. Um, but you know, that's what. That's yeah. what, that's what, that's what, that's what. But you did go to the headquarters, which is pretty cool. And you worked the test kitchen, which it was really, you FaceTimed your dad uh, while you're in the test kitchen making your yeah. own, did you make your own Crunchwrap or? Crunchwrap Supreme, baby. Yeah. And you would share the Crunchwrap with your dad, right? Yeah. Growing up? Yeah. Well, there there was a, it's, it's a, well, it's like a, more of like a soft taco that they had called uh, that, the yes. Baja Beef Gordita. You've been trying to lobby to get those back. I've been trying to get those back. They're genuinely like one of the best things I've ever tasted. And the Baja Beef Gordita was discontinued, and I wanted to make one at the test kitchen, but they didn't have the right ingredients. So that's why I FaceTimed my dad. I was like, hey, because he wanted me to make the Baja uh, Beef Gordita. And I was like, I couldn't do it, but uh, I made a Crunchwrap Supreme. We uh, we used to share the Baja Beef Gorditas. I'm sorry. I know. You're, you're just going to have to go back. Yeah. Darn it. And it is, the test, test kitchen is really cool because the people who made, like, invented the food— then cook it and serve it to you, and then tell you the backstory behind it. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's so sick. Uh, like like what? That's crazy. Yeah, it is very much like for a Taco Bell lover. It is euphoric to say the least. Mm-hmm. Thanks for uh, taking that that journey with me. Thank you, actually, because that happened because of you. So I should be thanking you. Well, we'll work on your pur- purple card next. Yeah. 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 This, you you eat Taco Bell every day, or you did for a long time. Uh, yeah, I I would say like. At a bare minimum, bare minimum three times a week. Healthy. <clears throat> a healthy amount, yeah. We love to see it. Pulse, he still has one, which is amazing after all that. I still have a pulse. Listen to his EP. Link in the description below. Final thoughts? Your mustache is cute. <laughs> <laughs> I I will be honest, my cheeks are usually red, but right now they might be a little a little more red than usual after you said that. Um Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have had trouble growing a mustache for a long time now, and I'm trying my best. It's not the best mustache, but you know what? I'm working with what I got, and I love it. (laughs) Is Q what you were looking for, or would you rather Dan have said, oh, your mustache is manly? Well, I know it's not manly. If he would have called it manly and grizzly, I would have been like, man... You're just kissing ass. Yeah, it's not manly. It's cute. <laughs> but but he's not a ass once. He's not a. It. He's not a guy that you know smooches on booties. He just he just says it how it is. He's not mm-hmm. trying to please anyone. He's no. being honest. Yeah. And and he said it looked cute, and I appreciate that. I like. I genuinely do. No, the, he he likes the dirt above your lip. Uh, 
Mm. Mm, I don't, it's not. I like cute better than dirt. Yeah, me too. It, it does look like dirt though. <laughs> um, one time I got a, one of those sharpie, little tiny sharpie pens, uh-huh. and I put a bunch of little dots there to see what it would look like, and that may have looked better than it does now. <laughs> but well, I, I don't think it's bad though. I don't think it's bad either. I like it. You'll it's, be you'll be 21 soon. It'll it'll get fuller. Yeah, yeah. When I turn 21, it'll mm-hmm. get really full. Absolutely. Every, everything changes after that. I know. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Just got to eat a lot of oysters and turn 21. That's all it takes. Do oysters help your mustache? That's what my friend's dad told me when I was in high school. Oysters helps hair growth? That's what he told me. Damn, I didn't know that. Could have been a lie, but. I've always wanted to be able to grow a beard. Like, on my cheeks and stuff. Can't do it. I just shaved this morning. I had a little bit of scruff. Oh, wow. Uh, you would have been proud. Yeah. You would have probably thought it was cute. But you may have been handsome by then. <sighs> well, okay, okay, I'm gonna leave you two <laughs> yeah. to it. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you want to listen to Pulse. Benson Boone, I love you. You really are one of my I favorite artists. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Really appreciate you always. Thank you, and I I appreciate you. You're just you're just a genuine soul who is doing some of the best work I've ever seen. Oh. And you always you always say the right things. You really do. You have a, a very keen gift oh, for the- just saying the right things so I appreciate that that is a, a, a crazy thing to say but I appreciate your words and your compliments and your time and energy always so thanks for being here listen to his music Benson Boone everybody yeah. Yeah. Pulse. thank yeah. you